using and mixing colors purely by touch alone, award-winning artist John Bremblitt creates vibrant, intricate paintings. He distinguishes colors by the braille writings on paint tubes or by feeling the different textures with his fingers. He uses raised lines to help him find his way around a canvas. Bremblitt's creations have been sold in 120 countries and his life story has been the subject of numerous documentaries. Bremblitt says that art shaped his life and he believes everyone has an artist somewhere in them, but sometimes they just need a little help getting it out. And here to tell us about his journey is the artist himself, John Bramblett. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Welcome to Showcase. So um, you have such an inspiring story and I know we mentioned it a little, but can you please talk me through your process from scratch? How do you put the visions in your head onto the canvas? Oh, thank, thank you so much for asking and for having me here, by the way. Um, I, 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 I do it through touch. Whenever I was sighted, of course, I would look at things and I'd be able to imagine them. But whenever you lose your eyesight, you start using your other senses to be able to understand the world. So, so I feel a person's face or, or I feel the lines of an object that, that I'm going to draw. And, and I, I, I put the picture in my mind that way. So you only see your subjects um, using your fingertips then? Right, right. And um, um, it, it's, it's through touch. And, um, but it, it's a way of understanding the world, of, of being able to, 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 to make a tactile sort of map with the world. And it sounds hard, but it's, um, you know, it, it's something that we all do a little bit in our lives anyway. You know, anytime that you're driving down the road and, and you're not thinking about the steering wheel or the pedals or anything, you know, you're not using your eyesight. You're just using your sense of touch to know where the the gear shifter is, or the or the or the, you know, or, or wherever or you know, the remote control, which button you're pushing. And also, I read that um, you distinguish colors by texture. For example, red is uh, like toothpaste, whereas black is like runnier. How does that come into being? Oh my goodness! You know, in in the studio, the way the way that I tell color is, I'll, I'll actually take different mediums and mix them in with the paint. So I'll, I'll braille the, the tubes. So if it's a, you know, a tube of red paint, I'll write red on it in braille. But um, I'll actually change the way the paint feels. So I can take a medium to make a paint feel very slick and runny like oil or one very thick like toothpaste. That way, whenever I have the paint on the palette, you know, um, I, I can tell the colors apart and it allows me to be able to mix the colors together. You know, if I have a really thick paint that I know, oh, that's got to be red. And if it's a really runny paint then I know, oh, that's got to be blue. So I make the paint feel the way that I want it to. I wonder what the significance of color for you is. Oh, my goodness. You know, um, the lines in a drawing or a painting are, are almost like the skin and bones of the painting. But the color is the emotion and the feeling. You know, it's... um. If I do a painting of a person, I want it to look like the person. But through the use of color, you can make it feel like the person. You know, if they're happy or angry, if they're sad, you know, you, you can express that emotion and actually make the painting feel like the, the person. And after losing my eyesight, it became more important for paintings to feel right. You know, I wanted them to look right, but they also needed to feel right. And that's how I use color to be able to do that. And what I makes, try to. What makes a good painting for you? Oh my goodness. Um, just the act of painting for me is, is the most important thing. You know, when a painting is done, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm done with it. But um, what makes a good painting is if you can communicate that idea. You know, the reason I paint is to connect with other people, you know, to, you know, to, to say, hey, I'm still John in here. Even though I'm blind, I'm still me. And I still have ideas and thoughts. And if I can take an idea and take it from in here and, and, and have someone else understand it, then that is a good painting to me. And you, you were once quoted saying, um, in a way, I'm glad that I became blind. I wonder why that is. Can you please talk us through that? Oh my goodness, that sounds like a strange thing to say, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, it, it changed the way that I thought about everything. And um, if I could get my sight back to you know tomorrow, I would, unless it meant that I had to, to lose everything that I learned from losing my eyesight. So, you know, if, if um, it, it, it made me look at the world in a different way. It made me slow down. And I learned so much more about the type of person I want to be and who I am. You know, it, um, it, made, it made me reevaluate everything. And I think that changed the person who I am today. And I wouldn't want to lose that. So, you know, if I could get my eyesight back and still retain all those memories, <laughs> then that'd be good. But 
Um, but in a way, I'm glad that I lost my eyesight because it changed who I, who I was. And that's a part of you now. Um, did you used to paint before you lost your eyesight? You know, um, I've always done art. I didn't think I would be a good painter, so I never painted, but I drew. And I think I could draw before I could walk. And um, I'm a bit, bit of a nerd. I, I read everything I can about art, I always have. And I took every class on drawing and illustration that I could growing up. And um, But I never did paint. I never did think I would be a good painter. And I didn't have the courage to try something that I didn't think I would be good at. Until I lost my eyesight. <laughs> and then I thought, why not? <laughs> and I could actually use the thick paint to be able to, to draw again, so. Well, um, so before we wrap up, I wanna ask one last question. There is lots of media attention for you, obviously, and you are usually hailed as the blind artist. But I wonder mm -hmm. how fair you think this is. You know, um, when I first lost my eyesight and I was painting, um, I, I, I didn't tell people that I was blind. I sort of hid that. And even in my first art shows, I didn't tell people that I was blind. And the art shows did really well. And I, I just didn't want people to think about the vision loss. I wasn't embarrassed by it. I just wanted people to look at the artwork. But then when it actually came out that I was blind, um, I started being approached by different charities and nonprofits to come and, and, and work with, with the people at their charities. And I started meeting lots of different people with lots of different illnesses and disabilities and, and, and different problems in life, you know, and, and I started thinking, you know, it, at first when I lost my sight, I thought being blind made me different than everyone else. But after a while, I, you know, I came to the conclusion that it actually made me more like everyone because everybody has something in their life that seems bigger than themselves, that seems insurmountable. You know, there's a problem at some point in your life that just seems huge. And for me, it was blindness. And for someone else, it may be something else. But um, but I think the blindness actually made me makes me more like everyone. So I don't hide it anymore. And I talk about it. And I just try to be as honest as I can about it all. Well, John Bramblett, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on our show today. Thank you so much. Thank you.